Greetings. This presentation covers Epicor Eclipse ERP, Priceline Maintenance. Pricelines are a way of grouping products for selling reporting activities. All products that you create in the product file must have a price line associated with it, although there are a couple like generic or default that are kind of a catch-all type of thing. Uh, although price lines uh, and buy lines are named the same and look similar, uh, they are completely different and we'll cover buy lines in another presentation. Here's a listing of price lines that we use in our system and of course we name the price lines and the buy lines the same thing according to the Eclipse standard. This doesn't have to be done but it does make life just kind of a little easier for consistency. These price lines are derived from the trade service pricing catalog service. IDW probably also has a price line or they just call it a manufacturer field. Uh, the ones, uh, the manufacturers that are not in the trade service or IDW catalogs, uh, we just kind of make our best guess in and try and come up with something unique and consistent. And this is a continuation of the list from the previous slide. This is the example price line that we're going to use. This represents the Leviton brand. The first section we'll cover here is the unit of measure defaults. Um, it looks a little insane when you first look at it. Uh, SBTAI, what the heck does that all mean? Um, what it is, is you're applying a default unit of measure for each type of transaction that you'd be using in Eclipse. Uh, S for sales orders, P for purchase orders, T for transfer orders, A for inventory adjustments, I for inquiries. I cannot imagine a reason on this earth why you would have different unit of measures for different transactions. Uh, it would cause probably all kinds of trouble uh, later on, unanticipated of course, but uh, Eclipse is nothing if not uh, a piece of software that gives you many more options than you could ever think to make use of. The next field we come across is budget group. Uh, budget group is, uh, honestly I've never seen it used, but it, uh, it is a handy, uh, potentially useful thing. Uh, this is used for reports to calculate sales targets created for certain product categories. Uh, if you go to create new budget groups, uh, you have to create them in E-Term because uh, the solar interface doesn't do that. Um, they are assigned at either the price line or the product level. Honestly, they probably make more sense to be uh, assigned at an individual product level than to assign an entire line. But, you know, it depends. Depends on the use of. As I said, I've never seen it used, so meh. Next we have duty code. This also is normally left blank. This is, according to the book, used to assign rates for duty, freight, or miscellaneous charges. Uh, this, would be, this would be a strange thing to do on a price line level. Uh, the minimum price basis, also normally blank, is used to set a price that the product cannot be sold below. Uh, your normal characters, that would be a, a good uh, entry for that would be the calculated cost uh, price entry or the purchase cost because uh, in most cases you want, wouldn't want to sell something below purchase cost. Uh, neat feature but uh, honestly the more controls and restrictions you put on things the more often your manager is going to be walking up to the counter and putting the override code in. So you know uh, it, it seems to me better to manage by by guidance and reporting than than by putting up barbed wire around things, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, the cut product line selection here is uh, uh, one of those options they put in there it, uh, for, in the case of electrical distributors, would be used for bulk wire, uh, and so you could cut things off of uh, certain spools. Uh, this setting also uh, works in conjunction with um, uh, the cut product uh, selection within the product file record itself. So you can say in the case of wire you could have all wire that is under this price line and uh, you can select between the individual products which ones you want cuttable and not cuttable per record. So that's what it, that's all about. Here we have local and global price bases which are a little confusing on the surface but really not so bad. The global price bases are the internal system names for the various pricing uh, and what they represent. These should never, never, never be changed. Uh, theoretically, they are changeable. Don't do it. Don't. 
The local basis names are the custom names that you can configure your system to use uh, for the people who are doing pricing in your system or, or doing sales. You know, these are mnemonics that make sense to you and your company. Uh, some local basis examples in our system are NKT for market price, uh, or uh, this could also be the column three trade service price, uh, or list price, uh, which is, would be the uh, retail resale price, um, purchase cost, uh, purchase ceased. I think <laughs> I think we left the the O out because there's only so many characters and we ran out of them. Um, and uh, calc cost we also use, uh, that's calculated cost, which usually r reflects uh, purchase cost plus uh, whatever shipping freight charges or whatever have to be incurred and, and uh, kind of passed along. And uh, in the uh, example uh, product that we have up here, in the product price you sheet, you see how those, those names after they got mapped out to the global bases, how you see them when you go to do the price entries within the individual products, and you you fill out your pricing as necessary, and everything flows all wonderful. Off of our edit menu, we have the uh, branch data selection, and this is uh, branch-specific control parameters. Uh, honestly, I've never had the occasion to make use of them or alter them from their defaults, but uh, there they are. They provide a few couple of interesting things, but uh, the more complex the plumbing, the easier it is to stop up the drain. I wouldn't mess with them unless you have to. Next selection off our edit menu is notes, and notes do not display anywhere, they're just uh, in internal notes for yourself. Uh, kind of neat they put it in there, but I uh, never had an occasion to use it. Uh, the return policy message, I can't find any documentation that covers where exactly this displays. I presume it probably displays in the purchase order entry for return goods, but anybody's guess. Here we have the uh, points selection, and the points program that they've put into Eclipse is a type of uh, rewards program that you can set up for your special customers and, uh, you know, with so many points, I don't know, fly them to the moon or whatever. Um, Kind of a neat thing. Uh, I've never used it in my company. I can't imagine an electrical distributor that would, but there there might be some other uh, Eclipse customers that aren't electrical distributors where this comes in handy. I don't know, a book repository? Uh, whichever. Anyway, see the Eclipse documentation on the points program if this is something you want to try and implement. Uh, there's settings that have to be done in the Priceline maintenance, in the individual records, and certain reports you have to run and I'm sure there's settings in the customer file as well that you'll have to set to uh, which customers can retain which type of points. And if you thought the points program was odd, then we have product zones, and this is really interesting. Uh, product zones, uh, when you can create them, uh, and you put certain products in certain zones, uh, what allows you to do is it restricts customers from buying certain products depending on what zone the customer is, is allowed to buy from and what zone the product is in. Um, I suppose this might make sense if you were a distributor selling guns and you wanted to make sure the automatic weapons didn't go over the counter to, to uh, people in California. I, I don't know what the use this would have as an electrical distributor, but there it is. Here we have tax exception groups, and these are used to change the tax behavior of all the products belonging to an entire price line. Uh, this is not something you'd normally do if you had products that you want to exempt. You'd usually exempt it on a product by product basis, but uh, in most cases with Eclipse, they they have uh, a similar setting that can be done on a kind of uh, global level and then on a more granular level. So this is the more global level of the two. Um, this would be seldom used. I've never had occasion to use it myself. The ranking selection. Uh, the ranking process is used to quantify the performance of products uh, in a variety of different ways uh, to help you try and establish the market uh, and market price for these particular products. Uh, the ranking can be based on the activity, uh, the sales volume, the profit margins, and uh, several other settings as well. Um, here we, 
the ranking just shows us the information and and uh, the rankings that have been used uh, for this line in the past. Uh, this is just for display purposes. It's not alterable here. Here we have the ability to set the uh, minimum GP percent uh, for an entire line of products. Uh, this is not where you'd normally do this. Uh, typically you either set a minimum GP uh, system-wide, uh, I think in control maintenance, or you might set a minimum GP uh, on a particular product, but to uh, to do it at the price line is a little odd, but uh, there might be some cases where this is useful. So in conclusion, the price line maintenance uh, has all kinds of neat goodies in it, but honestly you don't use most of them, at least for most people. Just the basic stuff that you see on the in the main screen is usually enough. The most important things you're you're going to be dealing with is uh, setting the local basis names and mapping those to the global basis names and consistently use exactly for each record for each price line record that you create use the same schema uh, or else you'll have all kinds of interesting troubles uh, so don't do that and um, as you see in the local bases there's also view levels that are assigned and this goes along with the uh, the authorizations that different users have uh, when they switch into different views and into the sales orders according to their restrictions and what view levels you have set for these pricings uh, which prices they'll be able to see in sales orders in different views uh, in case you're curious what that is but price lines for the most part are very simple because you're just going to use uh, and focus on the local basis global basis unit of measure uh, I hope this presentation has been useful or at least not too strange and as always thank you for your attention and I'm not Scott Zahn